What the flip is popping, Soup Nation? Ooh, that guy was hot. Did you guys see that? That guy was so fine. I am feeling so crusty and musty right now. I washed my hair last night and it's already greasy again. What? As you guys know, I am in Idlewild. Woo! and I have been having the best time. I'm so excited to show you guys this freaking cabin. You guys are gonna lose your minds at it. It is the most gorgeous place I've ever stayed. But before I show you that, we do have a sponsor. So take it away, Sarah. <sighs> Today's video is sponsored by Warby Parker. But Sarah, what exactly is Warby Parker? I am so glad that you asked that. Warby Parker offers you everything that you need for happier eyes. Eyeglasses, sunglasses, contact lenses, and even eye exams. And you can shop with them online or in stores. And they are super affordable. The glasses start at $95, including prescription lenses. That's a bargain. Sunglasses, progressives, and blue light lenses are also available too. And it was super easy ordering my glasses. All I did was go on the Warby Parker website and I took the online quiz. So check this out, y'all. All I had to do was answer a few quick questions online and Warby Parker will suggest some glasses that fit your face and your style. You order five pairs of glasses, try them on for five days, and there was no obligation to buy. It also ships for free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. So take the quiz and find a pair that is perfect for your sweet face. And I wanna show you guys the glasses that I got this time around, okay? I know a few videos ago I just did this, but I ordered some new ones because I'm crazy. So this is the home try-on kit that they sent me. Oh my God, sorry. Here's the home try-on kit that they sent me. Each pair of glasses are in their own little cubby. <laughs> And they did have the packaging around each glasses, so they're not gonna get all messed up during the shipping process. I just took the packaging off so I could show you guys. But yeah, this is what they look like. I'm gonna show you three of the ones that I really like this time around, okay? I'm, and I'm really happy with the ones that they picked out for me because I'm like, yes, absolutely. The first ones that I got are these blue ones. I'm really digging the color blue these days, even though I'm not even wearing blue right now, but I love the way blue looks on me. I think that these are so sleek and sexy and they're prescription so I can see. I just feel like that girl. I feel like I'm up to something. I have secrets, but you'll never know. The color is exquisite. Ignore my nails, oh my God. I'm getting them done Thursday. But look at how sleek this color is. It's like an Arctic blue, Arctic blue. You know what I mean? It's like a really pretty blue color. Oh, I love these ones. This is kind of a little bit out of my comfort zone. I never really wear really colorful glasses like this, but I'm, I'm trying to step out and try new things. So I really like these. And then I got these ones. Like I said, I'm, I'm trying the whole color thing. So I have different glasses that match my outfits. And I got these like, ooh, these like deep cherry red. It's like a blood red. And these are perfect for Halloween. I kind of want to wear these for Halloween. Like a red wine. I think it's so sexy. So this is what they look like. And I get so many compliments on these ones. These ones are actually my favorites right now. I just love them. And in the sunlight, they shimmer. It's a vibe. And the quality is so good. They don't feel cheap. They're like heavy, they're sturdy. I know that these aren't gonna break on my face. I wiggle around and they fit my face perfectly because I took the quiz online and I told them that I have like a, not a wide face, but it's just like a normal set face. So it just fits around my ears perfectly. I shake around. They're not falling off. They're not even moving. I love, these are my favorites. I got some sunglasses too. I got these ones. These are like a maple tone. I don't even know how to describe these. I think that these are just really mysterious. I just look cool. I look like I'm up to no good. I'm about to have a night on the town. I like wearing these outside at nighttime because it just looks like I'm too cool to be here, but I'm here. So just be happy that I came out. Don't talk to me but at least I'm out and I'm having a good time, but you wouldn't know that, now would you? But I am having a good time. I'm just too cool to tell you that. 
No, but I love the designs on these. Um, it's like a maple brown, kind of like a tie-dye ombre thing going on. I'm obsessed with these. I love that each of the glasses that I pick out has its own personality and its own soul, you know? So you guys need to try Warby Parker's free home try-on program. Order five pairs of glasses to try on at home for free for five days. That's right, you only got five days to make your decision and you have no obligation to buy them. Just try them on, see how you feel. The kit ships for free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. You just smack it on there, ship it back out. Try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash basca. That's warbyparker.com slash basca. Thank you so much Warby Parker for sponsoring this video and let's get into it. So I'm gonna talk about my experience while staying there. I'm currently still in Idlewild. I'm just at the park, I think. I don't even, is this a park? I don't know. There's a bunch of people walking around though. So I just wanted to tell you guys about me getting there in the first place. It was an absolute shit show. It wasn't as bad as the first time around I went to Idlewild where I backed my car up into a ditch and towed my car at three in the morning. Wasn't as bad as that. <sighs> so I was on the freeway watching the lightning, really not even thinking anything of it, just enjoying myself. In order to get to Idlewild, you have to drive up this really long windy mountain. And Idlewild is at the very top of the mountain. So here's the mountain. As I'm on the freeway driving to the mountain, the lightning stopped and I was like, oh, okay. I get to the bottom of the mountain and I start going up. And this is a 45 minute drive up this giant mountain. And once I start driving up the mountain, you guys, the scariest lightning storm I have ever seen. Oh my fucking God. It was so intense and there was lightning flashing all around me as I'm driving up a mountain and I'm literally like the only car on the road. Is this how I die? Am I gonna get struck by lightning? Because the lightning was so close and it was all around me. And since I'm going up a mountain, I'm getting closer and closer to the bolts. And I'm the only car on the fucking road. So I'm like, oh, since I'm the only car on the road, there's two things. One, people aren't dumb enough to be driving on this road right now. Everybody's inside and nobody's going to Idlewild right now because that's just insane and just not safe. Why the fuck would you drive a vehicle up a mountain during a really intense lightning storm? I was almost hyperventilating, y'all. I had to turn on like Mac DeMarco. I had to like blast really chill, happy music because my heart was pounding. As I was driving up higher and higher, I just kept like driving through clouds. And then as I was driving through clouds, I was like, please lightning, don't strike me right now. Don't strike me right now. Don't strike me right now. It, it, literally, it literally felt like I was playing musical chairs. You know that anxiety when you're playing musical chairs, music's going, and then when you're away from the chair, you like try to hurry up and get to the chair, and then the music turns off and you have to like run to the chair. I felt like that as I was driving through these clouds. It just felt like there was like jump scares happening all around me because I didn't know where the lightning was gonna flash at me next and it would happen like every few minutes and so I'm like gripping my steering wheel I would drive through the clouds and I would be like ah! and then once I would get through the clouds I would like breathe and then all of a sudden from my right side and I'm like ah and then I would just like keep driving and and I have like 30 more minutes of driving up this mountain I have 30 more minutes of it in front of me, behind me, like all around me. And it was so close to me. There would be like one car every 10 minutes that was going down. And I feel like we had this secret thing where we were both just terrified and I would pass them and be like, good luck. Like we were both just like, we can get through this. It was so scary, you guys, so scary and just so unsafe and I should have looked into that before I sent it to go <laughs> to Idlewild that day because the next day, Sunday, no lightning. It was just that night and that's when I decided to come. So unsafe. 
So this is a PSA to not drive during a lightning storm. And especially don't drive up a mountain. There's like a layer. Is that a spider in my car? Oh my God. There's like a full on spider web in my car with a spider in it. Why? That's kind of a beautiful spider web. I almost don't want to disturb it. It's like a really pretty spider web and it's glistening in the sun. Wait, let me try to flip the camera. Are you guys seeing that? It's like twinkling. Like, okay, queen. Um, so then I finally make it to town and once, ugh, once I got into town, I was so relieved. I felt like I could breathe again. So I didn't die. Thank God, my angels were really with me. My angels were really with me. And I was like praying out loud the entire time. I'm like, God, not today. Please don't take me today. I need to see this cabin. I need to see this cabin. I need to see the pole dancing room. You cannot do this to me. And I need to watch Bachelor in Paradise in the movie theater. I'm also seeing Harry very soon. Like, please don't do this to me. So yeah, I get inside the cabin. I turn on all the lights. And y'all, the cabin was absolutely gorgeous. Ooh! I filmed a little montage for you, but I filmed it during the daytime. But at nighttime, it was such a freaking vibe. I didn't film it during the nighttime though. But here's a little cabin tour.
first night um i unpacked and then i got back in my car and i drove to the little liquor market so cute the same guy works there every day and he remembered me from last time because i guess i wore my tie-dye sweatshirt last year too and he was like i remember you and i'm like really are you just saying that but i remembered him too so i was like good to see you man and then he told me I had a baby face and I got kind of offended. He was like, can I see your ID again? Just to make sure, cause you got a baby face. I'm like, sir, I am 25 and that's not a compliment. A baby face? I want to look like a chiseled woman. Baby face. Get out of here, Randy. You have a baby face, Randy. He was like 60. Wah! Who are you calling a baby? Anyway, so I got a bottle of wine and then I went back to the cabin and I was just sipping on the wine and I brought my laptop and I plugged it into the speaker system and the speaker was bumping music throughout the entire cabin. It literally said in the guest book that loud music is allowed and I could bump the music in my cabin all night long if I wanted to. And the cabin was kind of isolated. There wasn't really like any neighbors around me. Bumping my music was encouraged. And in the handbook it said, we want you guys to dance the night away. Okay, say no more. So yeah, the first night I was just bumping music, sipping wine. I was just dancing all around the house. I got to a point in my drunkness where I was starting to feel like very isolated and not bored. Like I was having a good time just dancing on my own. But I was like, damn, I wish, I wish someone was with me. Like I wish I could experience this house with someone. I don't care who. I was debating on calling the owner of that house and being like, yo, you wanna like have a dance party? But I didn't. Cause she told me that she was leaving town that night. She was about to get on a plane. That wasn't even an option. I was considering going out to the one bar here. It's not even a bar. It's like a wine tasting place, <laughs> but they were open pretty late. I was considering going there and meeting someone bring them back to have a dance party. But then also I just watched the Jeffrey Dahmer series with Evan Peters on Netflix and I was terrified to do that because who can you trust? Especially in the middle of nowhere. And also that would be so sketchy on my part. I feel like people would think that I'm a serial killer. You would never expect me to, but what if I was? I'm not, but like, you know what I mean? Honestly, the first night I was kind of scared just because the cabin was so big. I haven't stayed in a cabin that big before. Oh, it sounds so stupid to say out loud. This cabin's just way too big, but you know what I mean? It was just kind of like scary. There was just so many rooms and like so many layers and shit. So I was getting kind of freaked out. So what do I do? I go on Instagram, instead of pulling out my camera and vlogging the experience. Um, I went on Instagram Live and I never go on Instagram Live. I can't tell you the last time I went on Instagram Live willingly. I don't really like that shit. It's a lot of pre it's not a lot of pressure, but it's just like, what am I gonna fucking do on Instagram Live? I was really nervous right before I went on Instagram Live. I was like, oh God. I have no idea which one of my seven crushes is gonna watch this, but it was really fun. I got to talk to you guys. And then all of a sudden I looked in the chat and everyone was like, oh my God, Sarah, your ex is here. And I was like, what? Will's here? I'm like looking out the windows, but they're like, no, in the chat. And I was like, oh. <laughs> if Will just showed up to the cabin, that'd be so scary. But then I saw Will like typing and talking to the girlies and I was like, what the fuck, Will? I'm like, get on here. Like, how do I add you to this? And so then I added Will and I was so fucked up and so was he. And we had a pleasant conversation. <laughs> And you guys witnessed, I don't even know what you guys witnessed. I was with my grandparents and you ruined it. You were with your grandparents? Yeah, they're, they're cute. Okay. I was trying to start fake beef with him and like pretend like I was a crazy ex. His contribution to the bit was... Putting me on blast right now? What's up? Because you want to talk shit. Talk shit to my face, bitch. What'd I say? You want to come up on my live talk your shit you want to say hi sarah yeah what's, what's up, up hi sarah, sarah. You can 
How's this? Alex. How's my nose? How's my nose? I don't know. There's a bunch of holes in it. Dude, it must be a Christian nose because it's pretty holy. <laughs> That was a good one. That was good, right? That was good. That was a good one. Love you guys. Bye. How the fuck do I hang up? I don't know. Girl, figure it out. That was his only insult for me. Is your nose a Christian? Because it's pretty damn holy. Whoa. I was on Instagram live for a really long time. Someone told me to do a cartwheel and I almost broke my ankle and I almost broke the kitchen because I did a front flip instead. Someone said do a cartwheel and I'm like, bet, let me just turn it up a notch or six. And I did a front handspring. Someone said do a cartwheel, girl. If I broke that lighting fixture, Anyway, I didn't break the kitchen, didn't break my ankle, thank God. And then all of a sudden, the Wi-Fi went out and some of the electricity went out. And I was like, what is going on? And so it cut me off on Instagram Live, but that was probably for the best because I was starting to like say some shit. Like I was starting to get myself in trouble. Not really, but I was just like talking about people, like talking about these guys that I've been talking to and shit. And this is exactly why I was scared to go on Instagram Live, because I knew that I would just start spilling. And who knows, maybe they were even watching that, so. And I have no idea what I said. I know I didn't say anything like too crazy, um, but I definitely was talking shit. So yeah, the Wi-Fi went out and I was like, I think this is my cue to go to bed. And so then I just went to bed and I slept upstairs the first night in like that beautiful loft area. I might try to move my car somewhere else cause the lighting is trash. So then I wake up the next day, I make some coffee, I'm sitting outside, I'm journaling, you know the vibes. The owner hit me up and she was like, yo, the electrician's gonna come by, fix the Wi-Fi and just like fix the electricity. I don't know what happened. And I was like, T. So then I left and I went to this beautiful freaking cafe. It's called Cafe Aroma. So bomb. There's this penne pasta that's so dank. It's called the I love you penne. So good. It's like a shrimp scampi. So yeah, I went there. I edited my YouTube video while eating my penne a pasta talked to the waiter for a while he was a lovely gentleman not my type but he was he was cute and then the owner lady hit me up and she was like hey the electrician's gone and I'm like dope so I get back and at this point it's like 6 p.m. and so I'm like I'm gonna get in the tub in the hot tub outside I turn on the like pretty fairy lights outside it looks like a mystical fairy garden and I was just sitting out there in the hot tub reading my book, sipping on some wine with like Frank Sinatra in the background. It was quite honestly the best night of my life. I was out there for hours just reading my book. I couldn't put it down. I'm in this beautiful location. I'm breathing oxygen. I'm looking up and I see the stars. Like the stars are twinkling at me. It was just fantastic. And I didn't have it in me to take my phone out and record it because I was just in my zone i was in so much bliss and so yeah i didn't record that but i just want to give you guys that mental image and i forgot to bring my bathing suit that was the one thing that i forgot <sighs> i remember as i was leaving my apartment i was like i feel like i'm missing something so I had to go in the hot tub in a t-shirt, which was fine. But then I ended up taking my clothes off anyway, so I guess it didn't really matter. And I felt comfortable enough to be naked in this hot tub because there was like trees all around me. It was very private and it was just perfection. Being naked in a hot tub in the middle of the woods, reading a good book with Frank Sinatra. You do the math. It just felt so elite even though it wasn't real i was like imagining that i was just at my house i was like manifesting so hard that this would become my reality someday and it will that will happen and i can't wait for that but for now i'm just gonna pretend like that is my reality whenever i'm here so then after my little hot tub moment i take a shower you know what i'm saying and then i'm like i gotta utilize the movie theater room like i haven't even been in there yet and i want to watch a movie so i go into the little movie theater room i turn it on 
I'm laying there and I'm like, what movie do I want to watch? You know what I'm saying? So I'm scrolling through Netflix and I see that Mila Kunis is in this new movie, Luckiest Girl Alive. And I had no idea what it was about, but it was trending on Netflix. So I'm like, oh, this must be good. Everybody's watching it. First of all, I put on the movie, not knowing what it's about, and I'm watching it and I'm trying to get into it, right? I'm like, what is this movie about? And then I look on the bedside table next to me and I see a vape and I was like, what? Cause I thought it was a remote at first. And so I pick it up thinking it's another remote cause I was looking for the volume remote and I see that and I was like, what the fuck is this? And it's a vape, but it's a weed vape. It's like a weed vape pen. And I think that the person who stayed before me left their weed vape pen. And I was looking at it and I was like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't have done this cause that's kind of gross, but I did sanitize it. And I was like, I haven't smoked weed. I haven't been high in years, I think. And it used to always give me anxiety. So I wonder what's gonna happen if I just take one hit of this vape pen. Yes, the cabin was really big, but I felt safe. I was in constant communication with the owner. All the doors were locked. And I was just in a movie room watching a movie. And I was like, this could be a vibe. So I take one hit of the vape pen and I'm like, here we go. Let's see what happens. And I'm watching this movie. <laughs> and I thought it was going to be like a true crime movie. It kind of was. But you guys, this was the most triggering movie I have ever watched. Ever. Oh my God. Oh my God. Here's a trigger warning right now. Gun violence, SA. When it comes to gun violence, that is a topic that genuinely triggers the fuck out of me because I'm so scared of being in a shooting. Like that is my biggest fear. This whole movie was about Mila Kunis's character being involved in a school shooting and her having flashbacks of it. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but it was so triggering to watch. And also there was like a bunch of SA scenes, just like full out, like they just showed everything. And I'm like, this shit's on Netflix. Like anybody could watch this. Like, especially like young kids could come across this movie and just see all these brutal, traumatizing things happen like oh my god i was tripping and also i was pretty high like that one hit made me really high but it's funny because i didn't have an anxiety attack i didn't have any anxiety really it just made me more like honed into the story but it also like since everything was so triggering like i i don't know how i didn't have an anxiety attack i was like more so just really invested in the storyline, but it was still just kind of a terrible movie. To, it was kind of a terrible movie to watch while I was high for the first time in years. Don't recommend that. Don't recommend that, but I got through it and I finished the movie, even though there were multiple times where I almost changed it because it was just too much. Like it's really hard for me to sit through and watch SA scene. Like I, I had to like kind of close my eyes at some point because I was like, oh God, I, but like I get it. It brings awareness, but Jesus Christ. If there were trigger warnings at the beginning of the movie, I missed it. I missed it. Maybe there was, but I was like, I would appreciate a warning before, I don't know. It was just kind of terrible. After that movie was over, I was like, I really wanna watch something light, something funny. <laughs> like, I, I want a rom-com right now. And then I was thinking of Mila Kunis cause I just watched her movie. I remember her movie with Justin Timberlake, Friends with Benefits. So I was like, I remember that being funny. I haven't seen it in a really long time. So I search it on Netflix, but they didn't have that. They had no strings attached with Ashton Kutcher and um, Natalie Portman. I don't even think I saw that one. I only saw the one with Justin Timberlake and Mila Kunis. So I was like, I'm gonna watch this because I don't think I've ever seen this one. You guys, I pushed play. That was the funniest fucking movie I've ever seen. 
that was the funniest movie I've ever seen. And I can't tell if it was just because I was high out of my mind and everything was making me laugh or if it was just genuinely that funny. There were points where I had to pause the movie because tears were streaming down my face. I couldn't even continue watching it. And then I would have to like rewind it and watch shit. I was watching scenes over and over and over again because I just could not believe how funny that shit was. Like the writing was so good. And Ashton is so fucking funny to me. Like he is, I forget how funny Ashton Kutcher is, dude. Like I genuinely forget how funny that man is. And it was just such like a wholesome story too. Like Ashton wants to fall in love so bad with Natalie Portman, but Natalie Portman is emotionally unavailable. And just seeing that dynamic play out, it was really wholesome. And it was so funny. I was seriously fucking screaming laughing at that. Um, oh my God, and watching that high, it really took me in such a... It, it took me back to high school, like when I used to get high all the time and just like watch shit and laugh and never had anxiety. So that was dope. Um, <laughs> but it also like made me really tired. Towards the end of the movie, I was like, damn, my eyelids are getting really, he like I'm, I could pass out right now, which was crazy to me. When I smoke it at night by myself, there's no social anxiety happening because I'm not entertaining anybody. I'm by myself and I just get really tired and giggly. Maybe it was just also the strain that was in this weed pen. I don't even know what it was, but I really liked it. It was a giggly freaking time. And I was just losing my mind at Ashton Kutcher. He was so fucking funny. And Natalie Portman's so funny too in it. I'm so used to her being in serious roles and just seeing her in a rom-com and seeing her personality really shine through. It was so refreshing and I really, oh my God, if you guys haven't seen that movie in a long time, go watch it. So yeah, then after that movie was over, I just turned the projector off and I crashed at like two in the morning, which is crazy to me because I'm usually up till like four. Then the next day was Monday and I wake up, make some coffee, sit outside, listen to the birds chirp and I read some more of my book. I went to this other little cafe place. I can't remember what it was called, but I wanted to like switch it up and go somewhere else because I always go to Cafe Aroma just because it's so good. And I ordered a salad there because I wasn't that hungry, but I ordered a rack of ribs to go because I knew I was gonna get hungry later. And then the waiter said that I had a gorgeous smile and it made my entire day. I was like, thank you, sir. You have no idea how much that means to me. Went back to the cabin, turned on some music, danced around, you know what I'm saying? I got in the hot tub, did some journaling. And you guys, I didn't film this because it just wasn't really that interesting. I was just genuinely in my own world at so much peace. I just didn't want to film it. I'm sorry. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to do my makeup and I'm just going to look cute tonight for no reason. And once I was done with my makeup, it was genuinely one of the best makeup looks I've done in so long. I don't know how I did that, but just everything was so on point and it looked so fresh and perfect. Let me put you in position for the acquisition of some major paper. I just dip and we ain't even tripping. You could thank me later. And so then I was just like feeling myself for a while. And then I remembered that there's a pole dancing studio downstairs. So I went down, I literally ran downstairs and I got on that pole and I was just doing my freaking thing. I plugged my phone into the speaker and I was just fucking feeling myself, bitch. I can't wait to get really good at pole dancing and then come back and then do more shit. I don't really have any cool tricks down besides like the basic shit. So I was just practicing the basic shit. I have a playlist on my Spotify. I'll link my Spotify in the description because I have some fire playlists, but I have one called Sexy and I played that on shuffle. Oh, bitch. It was so hot. I was like really fucking feeling myself and I almost filmed it, but I didn't. <laughs> it's all up to your imagination. Oh my God, it was such a vibe. The only thing that I wish was different is I wish that the lighting in the pool dancing studio was a little bit better. The lighting was kind of weird in there. And then also I wish there was like one mirror so I could see what I looked like, but also I loved that I couldn't see what I looked like 
because I was just really in my body, like feeling hot. And I wasn't hyper focused on like how I look, you know? Like it wasn't taking me out of my zone, if that makes sense. So yeah, eh, that was like the only thing. And there was also the sauna that was downstairs too, but it just looked really complicated. And I didn't want to fuck it up. And I didn't want to like do something wrong and burn the house down because I had to like make a fire down there. I don't even know. But next time if I go there with people and they know how to do that, I'll get in that sauna. But it was so tempting and I was so sad that I didn't get in there. And then after I was pole dancing and acting like a little slut, I, not saying pole dancers are sluts, but I was just like in my slutty vibe. I went upstairs and then I remembered the Bachelor in motherfucking Paradise was on that night and I was so freaking excited because I got to watch it in the movie theater room and I kicked my feet up, bitch. And I watched Aaron Clancy prance around that beach. And it was fantastic. Such a great episode. And then I hit the weed pen again <laughs> because I really liked how it made me feel the night before. So I was like, eh, let's try it again. So I did it again, got pretty high, finished Bachelor in Paradise, and then I FaceTimed my best friend Katie while I was super high. We were just giggling about shit. Gave her a tour of the cabin. And then I was like, I wanna watch another rom-com. I'm in my rom-com era. It's just such a perfect mixture of romance and comedy. So then I was like, oh my God, I wanna watch the movie with Mila Kunis and Justin Timberlake because I haven't seen that one in so long. I hit my weed pen and I watched that one. That one's called Friends with Benefits. And I wanted to compare the two because I know that both of them were really similar and I wanted to see which one I liked better. And I finished Friends with Benefits and it was funny. There were some moments where I was giggling out loud, for sure. But I liked No Strings Attached better, I don't know. I was laughing way harder at that one. It was good, but it just wasn't scratching my itch. I don't even know what that itch is. And then after that, I went on Google. I like searched both movies and I wanted to see like what people thought was better. And everybody online thinks that Friends with Benefits is better. I couldn't agree less. I was like, what the fuck? Like literally every single review page or like people are debating that, they were all saying that Friends with Benefits was way funnier. And I just didn't think so. I think that with Friends of Benefits, the humor in that movie is so like, some scenes were just like obviously funny. It's like a globally funny situation, but like a lot of the situations in that movie just would never happen in real life, but they were just like really outrageously funny and people would just laugh at it. I just don't think that that humor is that funny. I really love subtle humor and situational humor where it's very relatable and like you can like easily put yourself in that situation and no strings attached with Ashton Kutcher was more so that type of humor and I gravitate to that so much more because I always try to put myself in these character situations and it, it was just so fucking funny imagining how I would react to the situations that they're in but with friends with benefits it was just more like something obviously funny would happen just sporadically and they didn't really take time to like marinate it they did sometimes but I don't know, it just felt, it just felt really forced and like obvious. It didn't really like make me think. Like I would kind of like let out a few chuckles cause I'm like, huh, hey, yeah, that's funny. But does that make sense? I don't know. But I also know the humor is subjective, but everybody on the reviews were just saying that Friends with Benefits was so much funnier. And I was like, obviously we're on different wavelengths. I don't know. I wanna know what you guys think. If you guys haven't seen those two movies in a while, watch both of them. I really wanna see what you guys think. Or maybe I just wasn't high enough when I was watching Friends with Benefits because I was so high the night before that. Um, but I don't know. I remember laying there watching Friends with Benefits being like, oh my God, I'm so hungry. And then remembering I have a rack of ribs in the fridge. That was the best moment of my life. This sounds like such like a stoner thing. That moment when you're like super high and remember that you have food. <laughs> but for real, I was really excited. I pranced out of bed and I whipped those ribs out, stuck them in the microwave. 
Oh, and I demolished them. It was honestly kind of scary. I did feel like a serial killer. And I was like eating the ribs and I was kind of like getting grossed out because just like the concept of eating an animal's ribs is insane. And I was just so high being like, just trying not to focus on that. Cause like if I really sat there and thought hard about it, I would have puked, but they tasted really good. So I was like trying to like remember that it tastes good, but yeah, I don't know. Being high and eating ribs just like really turns me off to that. So maybe I'm gonna go vegetarian. Cause that just like really warped my perception. It almost like activated my, <laughs> this is gonna sound slow, but it almost genuinely like activated my third eye and I was like looking at it for what it was. And I was like, this is kind of crazy. I'm just eating someone's ribs. Maybe I am Jeffrey Dahmer. Sure felt like it. So then, yeah, basically the next day I did the exact same thing. And I was planning on filming something that day, like some sort of vlog or like some sort of YouTube video, but I just genuinely didn't. I was kind of feeling bad about it because I was like, damn, I really don't have any content for them at all while I've been here. Um, but then I was just like, girl, you needed this. You can always come back, you know what I mean? I just really wanted to enjoy every second of that cabin and just like really soak it all in for myself and not worry about content. But yeah, I basically did the same exact thing as the day before. Um, watched Bachelor in Paradise again because it's on Monday and Tuesday. Hit my weed pen again, got high but not really, just like a comfortable high where I'm giggling. And then after Bachelor in Paradise, I fell asleep at midnight and that never happens. And then I woke up today at eight in the morning. I took one last hot tub dip. I spent the morning just like listening to the birds, drinking my coffee, sitting in the hot tub. And then after that, I just cleaned the Airbnb, did the dishes. That was basically it, y'all. Like, again, I'm sorry for not vlogging literally any of it. But I hope you guys understand. I really needed this. I've been going through a lot and I feel like this was the reset that I really needed. I feel like this inspired me again. I hope you guys enjoyed this video anyway. Let me know what kind of content you guys wanna see because I'm also in this weird spot where like, I don't know what the fuck I wanna film ever. Um, and then I come out to Idlewild to film. I don't even fucking film. So just let me know what kind of shit you guys want to see. Leave some suggestions down below. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Love you.